If you think the difference between male and female and subsequent gender identity is as simple as having or not having an X chromosome, then please stick around and watch this video to try and learn a little bit about this crazy controversy that's going on in the Olympic world. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and my goal in this channel is to help teach you about the medical side of the sports world. I'm actually in Paris right now. Uh, I've been here for the Olympics the past week or so. You can see Paris outside my window there. It's been absolutely beautiful. But the biggest story the past couple days has been of course with women's boxing. The story, of course, is that this Algerian boxer, Iman Khalif, is identifying as a woman. She's in female women's boxing, but there's a lot of talk that people saying she's a male. She's had these previous disqualifications for having XY chromosomes and failed gender testing. And so why in the world are we letting a man compete in a woman's sport, especially boxing? This is not the first time we've seen a big story like this. You might remember this track and field athlete, Castor Semenya, who was a middle distance runner who was disqualified from running certain events because of this whole differences in sexual development diagnosis and picture. This is gonna be as simple as possible of an embryology or the study of how we grow and develop, genetics and physiology lesson, so I can try to open people's mind to some of these challenging discussion points. Our genes are the blueprint for how our body functions and is built and is made. We get one half of our genes from our mother and one half from our father. That means most humans will have two genes for sex. That can be either an X chromosome or a Y chromosome. Now, typically a female sex will have an X and an X chromosome and a male sex will have an X and a Y. The contents of those chromosomes are what determine how we are going to develop either into a female, talking about sex again, or a male, again, talking about sex. So classic female sex, XX, classic male sex, XY. Now, interestingly, whenever we are first conceived in the womb, we all start off and we have the potential for our sexual organs, our gonads, to be either female or male. The presence of specific genes on the Y chromosome differentiate that down a pathway to become male. So without that Y chromosome turning on the pathway to become male, everybody would go down the female path in terms of their sexual development. So if you have a normal functioning Y chromosome that turns on the pathway to send you down to have male sexual characteristics, male genitalia, etc. That's the basic black and white kind of bread and butter of how things normally go. But as you can imagine, there are a lot of possible errors in not only the genetic composition, but also what happens from the downstream physiology standpoint. On that Y chromosome is a specific gene that turns on a lot of the testosterone, the androgen signaling pathways that form the gonads, the external and internal sexual characteristics. So we're talking about the external signs like breast gonads, etc versus the internal genetics. With these differences or disorders of sexual differentiation or DSD, the genetics are XY, so you have that Y chromosome that's trying to turn on the pathway to fully have those male characteristics, but there's abnormalities that don't give the normal male gonads, male hormone profiles. So what you are left with is a very convoluted, very complicated picture of varying degrees of both physiology from a hormone standpoint to external physical characteristics that are what we see when we look at somebody to make us think male or female in the traditional sense. Oftentimes with these athletes, that results in higher levels of testosterone that gives them more of this athletic advantage. But because they have any variety of all these different genetic enzymes, testosterone, hormonal dysregulations and abnormalities, they might not have the exact same external features or what we call phenotype that would make us classically think of somebody as male or female. So you can have these individuals who might look more masculine than a female, but whenever they were born, their external genitalia wasn't clearly male or clearly female, and then you can imagine all the stress and anxiety and everything that comes downstream of that when you don't have clearly male or female features. This is not always a black and white thing. And these DSD syndromes, these disorders, are far more common than you would think. These are not like one in a million types of things. And if you think of an athletic population where any sort of 
physiologic advantage might make you rise to the top, there's actually probably a high number of these individuals that are high level athletes because they have had that boost in their physiology, but it's no fault to them. I really encourage people to try and be open-minded and learn or read more about this because again, it is not as simple as saying so-and-so has an X chromosome, so therefore they are male. There is a lot of potential ambiguity that is no fault to the athlete or that individual. This is a really nice little review paper on PubMed that talks about all of these disorders of sexual differentiation. And if we scroll through, I mean, these are all the genes that play a role. This SRY gene is kind of that sex determining part we talked about with the Y chromosome that's the main male regulator, but you can have abnormalities in that. I mean, all of these different genetic abnormalities that could result in downstream variation, there is so much gray area in this. And so to simplify the question of this Algerian boxer, and say, well, she has a Y chromosome, so therefore she absolutely is male, it is not that simple. It is very, very complicated trying to determine the difference there when you get these DSD individuals. Different sports have different ways of managing this. Track and field has tried to look at some different testosterone levels where you have to be below a certain threshold to compete in certain events that they feel you have a high competitive advantage, but there's no consistency across the sports world in terms of how these athletes are managed and handled when it comes to a sport and differentiation that has been historically male and female. I don't know the answer to this. I'm not gonna act like I know the answer for how you handle these athletes who, again, at no fault to their own, are in this really difficult situation where their whole life they have not clearly looked or felt in the classic sense that we think of as male or female. They want to do sports. They want to be athletic. Maybe they're really good at their sports, and so that's a good outlet for them. But then they get further on in life, and we discover this thing, and, and we run into these questions of male and female. So think of putting yourself in that woman's shoes. I, I don't think necessarily that this Algerian boxer is trying to like deceive the system and just win gold medals. But think about being a child and having one of these known diagnosed differences in sexual differentiation syndromes where you don't look like your friends who are female or male. You feel different because of your hormone levels. How are you supposed to put those people in a box of purely male or female? Again, I don't know the solution. I don't know the answer. But I wish that we all had the intellectual maturity to not just see these headlines, not see the way somebody looks, and automatically assume that just because we are told they have a chromosome, they must be male or they must be female. And again, we're talking about from that sexual side effect because I think there are a lot of other gender identity things that factor into this as well with how you're raised and the psychology of it. So it's a very very complex situation. So the basics, you get one set of chromosomes for each parent. Classic males have an X and a Y. Classic females have an X and an X. All of us start down the same pathway with potential to be either female or male from a sexual organ, sexual characteristic standpoint. But the presence of some genes on the Y chromosome send that classically down the pathway male. However, abnormalities in that Y chromosome potentially an extra chromosome, I didn't even mention that, Kleinefelter, where you can have more than just those two chromosomes, send us down these pathways where we have abnormal phenotype, meaning abnormal physical characteristics, and abnormal physiology that don't clearly put us in the male or female box. That's it for the video. I hope this was helpful. Again, I'm not really trying to take sides here. Like I said, I don't have the answer. I'm just trying to give you a little bit more unbiased thought behind all this so that we don't rush to make such harsh judgments and assumptions when we don't really know the full story. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next video.